tropics, sign of Gentile. Tropics. Once again, good afternoon and welcome. Today, the United States Army, Military District of Washington, represented by the soldiers of the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, and the United States Army Band, Pershing's own, pay a special tribute to several soldiers who are retiring after many years of distinguished service to the United States Army and our nation. Participating in today's review, from left to right, is the United States Army Band, Pershing Zone. Formed in 1922 by then Army Chief of Staff, General John J. Pershing, the United States Army Band is the premier band of our senior service. Pershing Zone provides musical support for ceremonies and special events in our nation's capital and throughout the United States. The United States Army Band is under the direction of Major Aaron Morris and led by Drum Major Rob Moore. Elements of the Old Guard include Honor Guard Company, commanded by Captain Jack King and led by Sergeant First Class Alfonso Roman. Next on line is Bravo Company, commanded by Captain Frank Lazamis and led by Sergeant First Class Shane Vincent. Next on line is Hotel Company, commanded by Captain James Sager and led by Staff Sergeant Carlos Castellanos. Following is the Commander-in-Chief's Guard, patterned after the unit created by General George Washington in 1776 to be his personal guard. The Commander-in-Chief's Guard is commanded by First Lieutenant Nathan Mapes and led by Sergeant Dylan Fitzgerald. The last element online dressed in the Continental Musician's uniform is the United States Army Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps. During the American Revolution, musicians wore the reverse colors of their parent infantry unit. 
the men and women of the United States Army Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps maintain this tradition by wearing red coats instead of the infantry blue. The Corps is led today by Drum Major Barrett Newman. Ladies and gentlemen, moving into position is the Commander of Troops for today's ceremony, Lieutenant Colonel Maxwell Pappas, 1st Battalion, 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard. Since the days of the American Revolution, the colors have been one of the most important elements of a military unit. Therefore, taking the center of our formation in just a moment and bearing the national color is the nation's foremost color team. The 3rd Infantry's Continental Color Guard, led by Sergeant Nicholas Cook. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the advancing of the colors. Please be seated.
The history of the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment reflects the growth and development of our nation. 55 well-earned battle streamers, 2 valorous unit awards, 3 meritorious unit commendations, and 5 superior unit awards attest to the Old Guard's record of bravery and action and achievements during peacetime. In 1922, the War Department granted permission for the Old Guard to pass in review with bayonets fixed. The Old Guard will now fix bayonets to the traditional beat of the drum. Ladies and gentlemen, taking the reviewing stand are the reviewing officials for today's ceremony. Major General John B. Hashem, Chief Warrant Officer 5, Venus C. Lagmay, and Sergeant Major Tahita D. Parks. Accompanied by the hosts, Major General Trevor J. Bradenkamp, Commanding General, Joint Task Force National Capital Region, Military District of Washington, and Command Sergeant Major Nicholas P. Rocky. 1st Battalion, 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as honors are rendered. Please be seated.
Old car. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the advancing of the colors and remain standing for the United States National Anthem.
Please be seated. Major General Bredenkamp and Command Sergeant Major Rocky are now moving into position to honor the retirees. Please feel free to applaud your soldier as they are called. <laughs> Headquarters Department of the Army Special Orders. By order of the Secretary of the Army, the following soldiers of the Department of the Army are retired. Major General John B. Hashem. Military Executive, Reverse Forces Policy Board. <laughs> Chief Warrant Officer 5, Venus C. Lagme, Adjutant General. Sergeant Major Tahita D. Parks, Quartermaster. <laughs> Colonel Tori A. DeSiro, Engineer. Colonel Jason P. Gresh, Armor. <laughs> Colonel Melinda J. Harmer, Medical Corps. Colonel Bradley D. Ladd, Medical Service Corps. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Jason E. Albright, Air Defense Artillery. Lieutenant Colonel Jason A. Allen, Finance Management. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Misty S. Acock, Adjutant General. Lieutenant Colonel Armando M. Generoso, Medical Service Corps. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Burchell O. Porter, Engineer. Lieutenant Colonel Gabriel J. Ramirez, Armor. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Don M. Ryan, Specialist Corps. Woo! 
Lieutenant Colonel Jesse E. Smith, Medical Service Corps. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Michael D. Wallace, Judge Advocate General. Lieutenant Colonel Michelle J. Wesley, Logistics. Major Shalonda K. Del Rio, Military Intelligence. Major Kevin L. Hinton, Veterinary Corps. Major Lewis A. Horton, Logistics. Major Robert D. Whitley, Signal. <laughs> Chief Warrant Officer 3, Michael A. Cox, Aviation. Chief Warrant Officer 3, Joel Medley, Signal Corps. <laughs> Sergeant Major Andre Salazar, Quartermaster. Sergeant Major Tamika and Valentine, Quartermaster. <laughs> Master Sergeant Connie C. Castro, Signal Corps. Master Sergeant Robert W. Craig, Signal Corps. <laughs> Master Sergeant Derek W. Jenkins, Transportation. Master Sergeant Timothy G. Leakes, Quartermaster. <laughs> Sergeant First Class L'Oreal A. McNeil, Signal Corps. Sergeant First Class Adam S. Mishler, Field Artillery. <laughs> Sergeant First Class Michael C. O'Brien, Public Affairs.
Sergeant First Class Samuel S. Ophay, USEREC. Sergeant First Class Kenneth L. Rudder, Adjutant General. Staff Sergeant Andrew P. Nataro, Military Intelligence. We are proud to recognize these soldiers' devotion to our country, and we wish them happiness and prosperity in their well-earned retirement. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the posting of the colors. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Major General Braden Camp. Well, good afternoon, and it's, uh, I've done these for about the last year. It's always an honor to do them, but I can tell you this is the most motivated crowd that I've had yet. So please give yourself a round of applause. So distinguished guests, senior leaders, command sergeants, majors, friends, and above all, soldiers and families to be honored here today. Thanks for making time to attend this retirement ceremony at the historic Joint Base Meyer-Henderson Hall. 
On behalf of the Secretary of the Army, Secretary Christine E. Warmoth, the Chief of Staff of the Army, General Randy George, and the Sergeant Major of the Army, Sergeant Major of the Army, Weimer, Mike Weimer, welcome. It's another beautiful day here in the National Capital Region, and it's certainly a great day to be a soldier. Before I address our retirees, uh, distinguished retirees and families, I would like to take a moment to thank those who worked so tirelessly to make today such a special occasion. On the floor in front of you are the soldiers of the 3rd U.S. Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, the, oldest, the Army's oldest active duty infantry regiment. You look tremendous, and your professionalism and precision honors those retiring here today. So please join me in a round of applause for the Old Guard soldiers. I would also like to take a moment to thank the members of the U.S. Army Band Pershing Zone. As usual, they make every ceremony much more special. So please, a round of applause for Pershing Zone. The soldiers retiring here today joined the Army to be all they could be. In fact, one of the soldiers retiring here today enlisted or joined the Army when be all you can be was the slogan the last time during the Cold War. Others joined the Army after we were attacked on 9-11. Some joined following Desert Shield and Desert Storm. All have stood ready to meet the challenges and uncertainties of the global war on terror that brought almost two decades of continuous combat operations. They stand here today representing the best of America. Today, we honor 35 soldiers and their families for their faithful and dedicated service to our nation and for being all they could be. Collectively, they represent over 850 years of military service across our Army. 850 years. With service around the globe and in a variety of combat arms, combat support, and combat service support specialties, these soldiers, leaders, and their families answered our nation's call and have not only served during a period of persistent conflict, but also trained and led our young men and women to deploy into harm's way and to do our nation's bidding. Our Army and our nation owes you a debt of gratitude for your service and sacrifice that can never fully be repaid. The medal and U.S. flag are but a small token of appreciation for your service. I would like to take just a moment to talk about our flag, Old Glory. That you receive this flag on the occasion of your retirement is significant in that it is a symbol of our nation and recognized around the world. We have fought to protect the freedoms and our way of life, and we wear the stars and stripes proudly, both on our uniform at home and while deployed. The red color in the flag symbolizes the hardiness and valor which each of you has personified as a soldier and leader in our army operating in austere conditions with limited resources to accomplish difficult missions. The white color refers to pur purity and innocence, which you have sought to protect both at home and abroad. And the blue color represents the perseverance, vigilance, and justice, which each of you has demonstrated in the conduct of your duties as officers and non-commissioned officers. I am sure the flag holds special meaning for each of you, as it should, giving your service to our nation. As you walk out of Conmee Hall today, take solace in knowing you leave behind an enduring legacy that lives on in the countless soldiers you have trained, mentored, and inspired. The Army is better because of your service. Ladies and gentlemen, please, again, join me in a round of applause for these 35 great soldiers. But we would be remiss today if we did not take some time to thank the family members of each of these soldiers retiring here today. Your sacrifice and support over the past 20 plus years of service has been foundational to the success of each of these retirees, allowing them to accomplish their assigned missions and serve in the Army that they love. You have remained steadfast in your support during a time of war that necessitated family separations, and for that, you will never be truly and adequately compensated. Please accept our eternal thanks on behalf of a grateful nation for all that you have endured as military families. We could not fulfill our obligations to our soldiers, the Army, and the nation without the love and support of our families. So please join me in a round of applause for all the families here today.
So, our, so to our retiring soldiers, once again, thank you for your service. You are warriors and soldiers for life, so I humbly ask that you take one final task. Tell the Army story. Help to maintain the all-volunteer Army by sharing your experiences with America's sons and daughters so that they might be inspired to follow in your footsteps to support and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. We continue to serve as a shining example around the world because men and women like you volunteered to serve. So again, on behalf of Secretary Warmoth, General George, Sergeant Major Weimer, the Joint Task Force NCR Military District of Washington, the United States Army, and a proud and grateful nation, good luck, Godspeed, and thank you. Be all you can be, and this will defend.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the Army Song. United States Army is honored to have presented today's special ceremony. Thank you for attending and enjoy the rest of your day.